Sodi Ka, welcome to this special fireside chat session entitled Turn IT Investment to Profit Multiplier Center. I am Chao Ratyong Jiranan or Pupe, and I'm going to be the moderator or interviewer rather during this session, which is definitely a big topic for everybody as it is typically viewed that uh, information technology or IT is something rather common in various fields of industries. However, IT does not only help us work easier and reduce our workload, but it's also a profitable tool when it is appropriately implemented in our work. So this session uh, is for the newcomers in the field of insurance looking to learn more about how IT can be applied to create a significant amount of profit for you in the long run. And joining me in this special fireside chat is Nicholas Fakay, the CEO of Rujai, which I'm sure you all know, it's an online insurance provider, uh, which we see pro uh, products uh, in the field of auto insurance, motorcycle insurance, health insurance, and specifically now with COVID-19, we have also uh, COVID-19 insurance coming from this main leading insurance company. And uh, while before we start, I just want to remind everyone that you are more than welcome to give us your questions in the chat box. And we hope to integrate your questions into our fireside chat today. Hello, Nicholas. Hi. So happy to be with you today, even though we're Me not face-to-face. -face. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. I know a lot of people already kind of heard about your company, but can you tell us a little bit more about Rujai and what makes it different from other insurance companies? Sure. Uh, so Rujai is, a, is an insure tech startup. We started in 2016, and we originally focused on the car insurance market in Thailand. We've since evolved into a new area of product like health, as well as starting to look towards new geography in, in Southeast Asia. Um, I've been working in the insurance industry for more than 25 years, uh, working for most of the big multinational, I won't give the name today. But what I've seen in those companies is the difficulty to use technology to improve the customer experience. And that's what drives me to create Rujai, to start from scratch uh, with a few, Know, new IT platform to be able to leverage those new technology to deliver better experience. How we do that? So first, a digital distribution, so customer can come to our website and, and shop by themselves at 24-7. Deliver also better product by enabling and by using technology to enable our customer to customize their product and choose whatever they want to buy without being pushed by a third party. And also to deliver all better service after you buy the product. So thanks to video call, we can record claims uh, uh, much easier for the, for the customer, as well as using GPS technology to locate accident scene and be faster to help customer in the time of need. Last but not least, leveraging also new technology to lower the cost uh, by doing automation, using computer vision to facilitate the process and trans give back those uh, savings to the customer. I think definitely today is going to be interesting because you're kind of like the pioneer in terms of in the Thai market and utilizing IT very efficiently. And, and especially before pre-COVID-19, uh, because as we all know, when COVID-19 came, it really accelerated the, the insure attack. Uh, in the industry. Uh, and, well, anyways, talking about information technology or IT, how important is it for businesses today? I think IT has always been extremely important for the insurance industry. The insurance industry doesn't manufacture product that you can touch. We just make promises. We tell customers that, don't worry, if you've got a car accident in the next six months, I will take care of it. Or if I die uh, in the next 20 years, I will take care of it. So we make promises and, and recording those promises over the long term is what made very early the insurance industry to rely a lot on IT. Uh, and actually, if you look at the birth of computer in the 1950s, the insurance industry was one of the first industry to, 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 to get them on board. And mm -hmm. uh, I was reading some numbers that 30% of the computer in 1950 was purchased by the insurance company. So the insurance industry has always been extremely involved into IT and is spending a lot of money. Today, about 200 billion US 
is spent every year by the insurance industry into IT. Wow. Um, and and, and it's, it's very interesting because a lot of people may not think about that. And I thank you so much for giving that information. Um, so with that in mind, though, uh, you know, that common perception, that's why I said, like, you know, uh, perhaps maybe advanced technology has not really been tied in with the insurance sector. But now we're seeing a surge. Uh, a wave of insure tech today. Mm-hmm. And I really want to get your perspective on this because especially since you started your, your, your business, I think just a couple of years before 2020, you know, when we had that COVID-19 uh, outbreak and, and there was that, the acceleration, as I just said, uh, for the use of insure tech. Um, why are we seeing such a big wave now? Uh, and uh, yeah. can you tell us a little bit of how it was prior to COVID-19? Sure. So I, th- I think that's one of the big paradox that the insurance industry is not perceived as a technology industry. And actually, there was a, a BCG research done last year, which was saying that the insurance industry is one of the least digital industry. And that's kind of counterintuitive with what I just said before, where actually we're spending so much money into IT. And the issue and that paradox is coming from that the insurance invested very early, and now it kind of stuck with all technology. And it's very difficult for the people, for the traditional player to evolve those old technology into the new technology because there is a a lot of cost into migrating because there is a lot of risk attached to that. And that's what has been preventing, I would say, uh, or that perception from the consumer that actually the insurance was IT driven. It is IT driven, but on the old technology. Uh, For instance, today in in Southeast Asia, the the biggest platform used for the non-life industry is based on AS400 technology and COBOL programming. I'm sure that any people here below 30 years old have not heard about COBOL programming, but it is what's running the industry today. So that's what has created the opportunity for InsureTech to come on board, because I've seen it. I was, I was on the other side of the, of the equation working for big multinational and see that we were blocked, you know, that it was so hard to evolve, mm. so hard to, to pro- 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 procure new way of doing things to our customer because the technology was preventing us to do it. So that's how the InsureTech web's coming school. People realize that actually today it's reasonably cost-effective to start from scratch and then to be able to pass all those decades of all IT system into having something right from the get-go, which is efficient, respond to the customer need and create a competitive advantage. While we are small, we are InsureTech, we are in, uh, still nowhere compared to the big companies of this world, but because of that leap in technology, we're able to be competitive against them. So you say, you're basically saying that the, the big challenge, the big obstacle for a lot of big corporations in the past is that you've already had like a system that was already used for many years. So when you want to integrate it with new technology, it's going to take a lot of funding. It's going to take a lot of time uh, versus as what you said, you just like, you know, just cut your losses, just jump into the new tech. Um, exactly. Can it, can you tell us a little bit about what was that turning point, do you think, when you felt like, you know, there was a pivot towards going to just, you know, cutting your losses and going to new tech? Sure. I, I, for me, it was very early. Uh, before launching Roja, I, I launched uh, another uh, similar venture called Direct Asia, which is still uh, still around. Uh, and so in the early 2010, I realized that, you know, if we wanted to really accelerate, we needed to do that. I don't think it's been the perception of everybody, but I can see today that most companies since 2015 and most of the large companies also do realize that the future need to go towards that direction. They need to, to, to rethink the whole uh, uh, core system that they are using. They need to embrace new technologies to be able to deliver what the consumer is expecting from them. So I think that trend has really been accelerating with the, with the InsureTech web where they have seen newcomers coming with little mean and being able to disrupt them uh, quite significantly. And then now they are realizing that, hey, we need to get our act together. If we're not, we're <laughs> going to become the Kodak of tomorrow. And, and, and then we do see uh, the response coming quite strongly now. So now that we know the insignificance of, of you know, investing in IT, what are, what are the key areas that you're seeing you know, the, the investment going into right now? I think there is three key areas that, that uh, insurance players are investing in, and, and you know they are basically the key component of insurance, so no surprise there. First is distribution and sales. Second is product and underwriting. And third is uh, claim servicing. Okay, this is 
and this is the business. You know, we've got three main functions, selling product, I mean, building product, selling them, servicing them. So everybody's investing around with a different uh, angle around those, those three, those three uh, areas. On, on the sales investment, we see a lot of direct distribution coming through, and that's what Roja is doing, building digital platform which enable customers to purchase their product online. And we do see other players coming, including traditional company in Thailand, starting to invest in that direction. The second area in sales and distribution we've seen is what we call today embedded insurance, meaning how to enable non-insurance player like Grab, Shopee, and others to provide insurance for the digital journey of their customer. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of investment going into that direction. And the third one, which I think is very important and should not be uh, neglected, is the investment from the insurance company in digitalization, digitalizing their, their intermediaries. Okay, so direct distribution is one way to go, which is trying to talk directly to the consumer. But the other way is to keep the agent and brokers, which have been doing a great job for the last 100 years, but enabling them to also adopt digitalization to facilitate uh, their work with, with their customers. So this is the three area that I see as being very strongly invested by, by the insurance industry on the sales and distribution. On the product side, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. just if no, I- No, no, keep going, keep going on the product side. Yeah, on the product side, I'd see new area of, of development to create new products thanks to technology. Telematics, for instance, which enable you to see how people are actually driving on the road oh. to build better insurance product for them, to build better car insurance product, and, and better pricing because we've got a better sense of the risk. Or watch fitness watch. I mean, fitness watch is giving you so much information about how you, how much exercise you do, how fit you are, uh, and that you can bring that into insurance product to give more uh, product which are more in line with the customer lifestyle and, and its risk. And lastly, but not least, the automation. I mean, one of the issues that insurance has been facing forever on claim servicing, for instance, is you are depending, your experience is depending on the one person. Who's the guy who's going to handle your claim? And if you've got a good guy, you're going to have a good experience. If you've got a not so good guy, your experience is going to be negative. So investing in the automation of the claims process by uh, standardizing what the customer experience is going to be, as well as saving costs, because if you can automate more, you can uh, uh, reduce your cost base, is the third area where we see a lot of investment in, in, in insurance and insure tech today. There's definitely it's a, a, a broad range of, of what you were just saying about various areas um, that we are seeing investment going into. If you can talk a little bit about the evolution of how it's developed or the implementation of these technologies um, in a more clear, clear way as in like, how is everything connected and how has it evolved together? Mm -hmm. I think the, I mean, the, the, the evolution has started, I would say that, that new evolution has started really in the early 2000s with, with, with you know, internet becoming uh, widely available everywhere. But I will say from 2000 to 2015, most of the investment or evolution were actually small evolution, meaning building a website, but still relying on the historical outdated core system. Uh, and, and that has bring some benefit. Of course, uh, customers have been able to access product differently, but it doesn't bring the full benefit of, of, of that revolution going on today because you're still relying on the backend system to drive your process. Uh, and mm -hmm. as such, a lot of the project were limited in scope. And I think from mid 2015, a bit what I was saying earlier, in mid 2015, people realized that if you wanted to, to be the Uber of, of insurance, you needed to break everything through. You needed to, to start from scratch and you needed to leverage those new technology to, to the maximum. And that's where we see the insure tech uh, uh, scenes developing very quickly with, with companies taking large market share in a very quick time, which has also pushed the traditional incumbent to rethink their view with outdated technology and how to get from where they were and, and, and reshaping the world IT solution they have into fully new uh, developed technologies. Now we've talked about how it was definitely a big challenge, a big obstacle for traditional corporations to, um, you know, to integrate new technology into their already ingrained, you know, system and, and, and the jump into new technology. But, you know, nothing is easy. Um, and you, you mentioned there's a lot of things that you're working on, uh, some even involving very advanced technology in 
you know, predicting the behavior or be predicting the trends of the future. That is your field of work. Um, what are the main challenges uh, that you have been facing so far in your, you know, in your journey? So on our side, uh, the, the, the main challenges will be customer adoption. So I think it's great to come with new ideas and, and changing the way things are done, but it's also challenging sometimes for the customer to, to, mm. to, to, to accept the way that things are changing. You've been used uh, to do things in a certain way for 20 years or 30 years, and then suddenly there is new way of doing things, which will bring you benefit, uh, but the people tend sometimes to be a bit skeptical because insurance, you know, is always that industry which people have always a bit of head love relationship with, where you feel a bit, are, are those people trustful? Uh, can I can I rely on them? And, and that's just sometimes I've been challenging to, to get the mainstream people to move to new way of doing things. But clearly what we've seen is early adopters have been joining the bandwagon very quickly. And then now our challenge is how do we get away from the early adopter and bring the uh, mass market into that new way of doing insurance by letting people self-service themselves. So that, that will be probably one of the key, another key challenge. The second challenge uh, which we're facing, and, 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 and again, this is a worldwide challenge, is regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, indus oh. The insurance industry is a heavily regulated industry for, for mm -hmm. the right reason, because mm -hmm. you know people give you money before they get the service. So we need to make sure that the regulator is here to take care and ensure that this is done properly. And then you're not giving away the money to somebody which cannot deliver. So not questioning regulation at all on that. And I think it's, it's definitely needed. But the, the regulation has also been uh, sometimes a slowing down in terms of adoption of those new way of doing things. Okay, Because mm -hmm. we, we, we need to convince other third parties, such as, such as the regulator. And again, this is not a Thai topic. It's, it's the same everywhere in the world uh, mm -hmm. where you need, you need to convince them that there is a new way of doing things which is going to be beneficial for the consumer. And the regulator being conservative by definition, because that's their job, is to protect the, the insured, sometimes has been slowing down that, that adoption of new technology. And, and that's something where uh, we, we hope things will evolve over time uh, quickly. So I would say to me, that's mm -hmm. probably the, the two key challenge that um, the thing about adoption, definitely, I can relate to. I think a lot of us can relate to that because, uh, you know, you, we we admit, yeah, we, insurance is something that is a, is kind of a very uh, personal relationship between the customer or the consumer and the the company because it's trust that you know that the relationship will last for a very long period of time. And we've traditionally, of course, used people to 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 have that very intense or very uh, good relations with their consumers how then is technology coming into play because we've seen the adoption happening with a lot of um, you could say insurance packages that don't have high risks you know for for people to you know have confidence in using it how do you think the the solution will be or what will the solution be to trying to get that mass market that you're talking about while using technology yeah. at the same time? Sure. I, I think it's, I've seen it in, in many countries. It's always worked the same way. First, the, the first product to go digital, fully digital, I would say, where customer will buy by themselves are the simple product like car insurance or your PA insurance, something which, which is very clear for the consumer. It's a simple product. Everybody understands it. You know what you're buying. It's commoditized to a certain extent. And as such, the advisory role of the traditional intermediary is being perceived as less important. Okay, so I think that's always the first one to, to follow. And then as customers get used to that and start to get confidence with that way of, of purchasing, then they will slightly move towards uh, other product and more sophisticated product. Having said that, I still feel there is a, a, a wide and a big area of the market that still need to be serviced by knowledgeable intermediaries. When you buy an insurance product which will last 30 years, or when you buy a health product which complex, which will reimburse some things and not reimburse other things, you want to have somebody knowledgeable to advise you in your purchase journey. So I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's you know, digital will take it all. Uh, I think digital distribution, direct distribution will take a certain share of the market. And the second aspect, which I mentioned earlier, is also enabling digitalization for those agents and brokers to facilitate their job and their advisory mm -hmm. role towards the consumer. And I think we see a lot of company investing on it today. And, and I, I think that's one of the way of the future to 
bring digitization to mass, meaning not against the intermediary, but with the intermediaries. And that means what? That means building platform that the intermediaries can use so they can explain the product in a, in a simpler way. They can customize the product to for their customer in a better way. Uh, they can do a lot of the process by themselves. They can enable digital signature so that, you know, you don't have to do all the paperwork <laughs> yes. of, of insurance, which is yes. always... That's a pain point always, there. <laughs> yeah, which is always cumbersome. And, and we do see a lot of that. And, and some big company in Thailand today are investing a lot in digitalizing their, their distribution channel. Okay, well, yeah, um, being flexible or agile is very important. I mean, in any industry, um, how is it important for the insurance industry? I think I think it's critical, and I think you know when we talk about uh, earlier on about the fact that most of the traditional insurer are facing difficulties to evolve from their core platform to new platform. Uh, that's most of the time because they haven't fully embraced agile technology. And when you don't embrace real technology, that means you're going to do a, a, big prod, a big project to replace the old platform with a new platform. And that's going to take two, three years, and you get no benefit for two or three years while a lot of people are working on it. It's extremely costly and often ripe for failure. I've seen in my career dozens of 100 million US projects failing mm. Uh, mm. because of that. So agile technology enable and will enable those companies to evolve more slowly by doing smaller size project, which will deliver immediate benefit and then reassure the company that, yep, that's the right way to go. And let's build a scope a bit more, a bit more, a bit more uh, in order at the end to, to, get, to get a new platform, which deliver new technology, enable the customer uh, to, to choose and to, 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 to have a better experience uh, while avoiding all the risk of those big IT projects of the, of the early 2000s. So I, I do see Agile is going to and is already helping a lot of insurance company to evolve and, and, and embrace the, the new technology. So they do have to be mindful though, I guess, to, to a certain point as to like, what is the right move for them or what is the right fit? What is the right technology for their business? Um, because obviously you, you, you said, you said you've said you seen you know, uh, failed projects that amount to a large amount of money. Um, what is, I mean, just, just briefly, what is your, your advice for those who are listening, um, you know, on their journey into adopting technology into their businesses? Um, what should they be thinking about before they decide? Yeah, so I, I think the first, the first thing is determining the ambition of those projects. So are you, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to achieve? It should not be an IT project. It's a business project. It's a business oh. transformation exercise. So you need to show what do you want to do? Do you want to just improve a bit what you have currently and then uh, uh, keep your whole platform to, to, to save cost and, and, and simplify, simplify the project? Or do you have the ambition to really change everything you've been doing and do it in a new way? Once you set the ambition, after is how do you bring it to a, an agile process where you're not going to do everything in one day? If not, it's as we talked earlier, it's a massive project, a lot of cost, a lot of risk, a lot of chance for failure. So piecemeal, how to piecemeal that to have small improvement that you can demonstrate there is a return on investment and then increasing the scope step by step to get to get to where you want. So you can do that uh, or you can be a bit more brutal and to say start with a new technology straight away uh, and do that parallelly. And I think that's something which has not been done in the past because a lot of the insurance company always think about migration. What does it mean? Mm. I've got my platform today. I've got all that in my platform and I want to bring all into the new platform. And when you go and you start like that, it's extremely complex. Migrating platform to platform is, is terrible uh, uh, issues uh, and created a lot of difficulties, which, which often kill projects. So my advice will be, you know, sometime to do it parallel. Start a new business venture, start a new things on, on a new platform, keep your old platform parallelly for a while, and then migrate step by step the policy from one platform to the next. And that's kind of easy for non-life company because most of the, our contract is one-year contract, so it's easy at renewal to just bring them on. But when you're in the life industry, that advice might not apply because they have yeah. 30 years old contract and that's that much more complicated for them. So I'm, I'm not talking on behalf of the, of the life people there. A, a third way to, to, to do it, which probably is, is simplify a bit and, and avoid a lot of the risk, is to buy existing platforms which are built on new technology. I think mm -hmm. there is today mm -hmm. a lot of providers which have developed a new modern technology that you, as an insurance company, you can decide to 
embark, uh, uh, and that will simplify a lot of the starting of the project. It's not, it's not simple like that. You still need, despite the fact that you buy that platform, you still need to customize it to your own need. You still need to have a lot of work. You will still have a, a quite expensive implementation project, but it's an easier way to do it. The downside of that is you've got cost and lack of control. The cost of purchasing mm. might be quite significant, and you not fully control your platform when you're depending on the third party provider which give you the platform. But I will say, depend again, it's all about ambition. It's all about what you're trying to achieve. It's all about what's the vision you have for your company. And then depending on how you scale that, then you can adapt and choose which, which road is the best for you. Yeah, it's, it, everyone has their own individual journey. I mean, even when you say, you know, you can adopt another system from a third party. I mean, that could just be the first stage. And eventually, you know, you, you will create your own, uh, you know, uh, platform, right? It, it's not that easy. I think if, if oh, okay. you start, yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> if, you, you put it, if you buy a, an external party platform, then then you kind of, it's, it's it, you know, either uh, if you want to redo it, you might as well, if you want your own platform, you might as well do it from day one, um, because if not, uh, you're creating another project on top of another project. That's which, just too which, much. Uh, yeah, which make it uh, complex and, and costly. I mean, those, those IT projects are costly. That's good advice. Okay, we have a question from the audience here. It's um, about COVID-19. How mm -hmm. has it impacted the IT investment in the insurance sector? Also want to add, of course, I think um, the elephant in the room is that in Thailand, we had a fiasco of, you know, these new in insurance packages being offered you know, against COVID-19. And then now we have companies that are, are facing financial problems as a result of it. Um, how so overall, what is your opinion of the impact of COVID-19 on IT investment? Okay, okay that's, that's two, very, I mean, two very different questions. <laughs> I'll start with the, the impact on COVID on the, on the IT, uh, on the IT in, in insurance. I think definitely what we've seen, everybody has seen, is a strong acceleration. I mean, the fact that COVID-19 forced insurance company to operate remotely for extended period of time has you know, creating a lot of new questions in terms of the infrastructure they need to use, in terms of the use of cloud technology to facilitate uh, uh, remote working. And that's, you know, that's been an acceleration of, of 10 years, at least on, on that aspect. The second acceleration we've seen is, of course, the consumer behavior. Uh, you can't, you can't uh, meet with your usual agent or intermediaries to buy your insurance. So you are, of course, to rely much more on digital distribution. And we've seen a big increase in the number of visits that uh, that Rujai have seen on their website during during the COVID nineteen. So there's been also an acceleration in the in the change of the customer behavior as the consequence of COVID nineteen. And the third one also, uh, this is what uh, we, we talk about it a few times already, but that has really pushed the digitalization of the distribution force. Agent and broker realize, hey, I need new tools if I want to do my job without having to go to the coffee shop because. They were not, you know, traditionally insurance, you go to a coffee shop, you talk to your client, and then you, yeah. you sign a deal. If everything is closed and you cannot meet, those guys still need to work. And that has pushed a lot the insurance company to develop new tools that help their agent to, 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 to provide that digital experience to their customer. So definitely it's been, it's been a massive acceleration. On the product, uh, on the product feature and, and what's happening today, I think uh, to, to me that that's not a technology issue. I mean, this is just back, back to basic. It's a insurance 101 is you, you are underwriting risk, which you don't necessarily control. Nobody control knew what was going to happen with COVID and nobody know what is still going to happen. We are into mm -hmm. new, uh, new arena and as such, you know, it was very risky for the company who launched those type of product to do it. I mean, they take risk. They win for a while, they lost for a while, and now they are losing big, and, and, and it's bad. But, but I think this is this is bad, just insurance 101. You just need, you need to underwrite what you understand, not what you don't understand. Mm, okay, and the last question is coming from the audience as well. Um, what are your expectations for the future of IT investment uh, in the insurance sector? Uh, it's really interesting what you've just talked about, what the progress we've made. What is your view or perception for the future? That's it. So the investment is there already. As I mentioned, the industry is spending 200 billion a year. And I think that number is going to keep going. up. And what we're going to see is more and more companies, as we, as we talked before, going to embrace big projects and, and, and trying to change their IT platform to get to, to the new nirvana of, of new technologies. And that's going to be a lot of investment. 
At the same time, we see a massive investment in insurtech. I mean, the number of capital raised on the insurtech front is at record level. And we do see all those companies building a lot of great companies, including Roger, I hope, uh, into, <laughs> into providing new solutions for the customer, leveraging new technology. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to be open a new area of, of a big M&A, a merger and acquisition. I think the, a lot of the traditional insurance company are going to think, why should I get into um, uh, that big IT project, which is going to cost me a lot of money and will take a lot of time to give results, while well, actually I could use that money to purchase some of the insure tech, which has been proven to deliver uh, a good result. And as such, they are going to, to, to have a, a double benefit. One, acquiring technology, and two, acquiring existing businesses, which are already uh, delivering a lot of value. So I, I expect a lot of IT investment. I also expect a lot of uh, merger and acquisition, uh, I will say in the second half of this decade, when, when the insure tech of today have reached some sort of scale and become very interesting for the big goal I have of, um, of the insurance industry. Thank you so much, Nicholas. I think I uh, and the audience got a lot from this session and um, it's exciting to see, you know, what has been done and also it coming from a main player in the insure tech here in the country. And we look forward to hearing from you in the future as well. Um, for the audience, thank you so much for your questions. That's it for our session, but of course stay tuned for more as always in our event. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Thank you, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here today. Yes.